Hello, this is the Shoddy Strawman. Today I'm going to be going over why the base stat totals of some Pokemon can be very misleading in low cup. Now before I get into it, if you could like, share, and subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it. So what is base stat total? Base stat total refers to how your base stats of Pokemon will A, affect how they grow, and B, when we add them all together, we will get a base stat total. How much do you have going for you? For example, this Mudbray has 380 base stat total, Drillbird has 328, and then Diglett has 265. So, of these three Pokemon, which you think will be the best in Little Cup? This will be going over Generation 8, as we already know the metagame for that. Uh, but you would think, well, Mudbray has the largest base stat total, would that not make it the best Pokemon? However, this is not true. If we go to the viability rankings, this is for Sword and Shield, Generation 8, we can see that at A plus rank, there is Diglett, which has the lowest base stat total. We have in B plus Drillbur, which has the second highest. And then in B tier, we have Mudbray, which has the highest. So why is this? This is because of the roles that you have Pokemon play over uh, in your team composition. Look at me. So what will Mudbray and Drillbur want to do over the course of the game is, like that's what you always are thinking about whenever you're building a team. What do you want this Pokemon to do? Well, what both Mudbray and Jobber like doing in Generation 8 is that they like taking poison type attacks, so that way they can help support their part. Typically, what you would run is Mean Fu along with them, and it was a good partner for both. So, in order to make sure that poison type Pokemon such as Marionee couldn't just keep going wild and throwing off sludge bombs and poisoning your team, you would run a Drillbur or a Mudbray so that way you could switch into these Pokemon, be able to take a hit, and then be able to deal damage back or otherwise gain some advantage. And you can do this for, for a few ways, which is either you can directly attack into them, such as Drill Burst, Earthquake, or Rock Slide in order to deal damage. You can also use Rapid Spin to remove hazards from your side of the field. You can do Stealth Rock to set up hazards for your opponent, so that way they have to play with a little bit more chip damage over the course of the game. You had options. And as you have options of, well, I can click any of these four moves, your opponent also has options of, well, with my Marionee, and it's facing a Drillbur, and Drillbur has Earthquake, which can hit it really, really hard, why can't I just switch to another Pokemon? This is not like in-game, where the AI will never switch. So what do you do in that case? So, if your opponent has a Marionee versus your Drillbur, they could always switch into Natu, and Natu was a good switch in because it's a flying type and therefore immune to ground type. So the super effective Earthquake on Marion would not hit Natu, so it would be a pretty good switch. Now what can Chilber to punish this possible Natu switch in? Well A, it's got Rock Slide to hit it kinda hard because it's a flying type that's weak to rock, but also you have Stealth Rocks that you can set up on it. And Natu's ability is Magic Bounce, and that would block certain status moves. And it blocks Stealth Rock, so why is it that you can use Drillbur, but not Mudbray. That's because of Drillbur's ability, which is Mold Breaker. And Mold Break ignores other abilities. So you can still set up Stealth Rock on Natu, despite the fact that it has Magic Bounce. Mudbray's ability is Stamina, which raises its defense by one stage after its damage. And I mean, that's still a good ability, but the main issue is, well, how does that help me against Natu? I mean, I, I can't set up Stealth Rock against it, so what am I going to do? And the simple answer is, you're probably going to switch yourself. And it wasn't terribly great as a result. It was very hard to get progress with it because you can't set up Stealth Rock like you can with Drillbur. Drillbur also came with the additional benefit of having Rapid Spin, so if your opponent set up hazards on your side of the field, you can clear them with Drillbur. So, despite the fact that Mudbray has a better base stat total, it was not better than Drillbur because Drillbur has A, more moves that are really good for punishing both of like these key Pokemon, as well as a good ability. So, that can make a really, really big factor in what you choose on your team. So, okay, well, what if that's just a one-off thing? What happens if that's not true for Mudbray versus Diglett? Well, the reason why Diglett was so much better is because its ability is Arena Trap, which prevents opposing Pokemon from choosing to switch out unless they are airborne. So, in the Marionee versus Natu example, if your opponent has, if your opponent's Marionee is up against your Drillbur, you can just click Earthquake for, versus it, and it would die. But it can just switch out, so what's the issue? Well, Diglett's ability, Arena Trap, prevents it from switching out. So the ability to switch up your switch up your matchups, so it's like, oh well, my drill is in against Marion I can just switch in not to take the earthquake, it's whatever. It can't do that anymore, and it has to take the earthquake in its stead, which means that you can deal a lot of damage really quickly. And if your opponent's not playing correctly and your Marionese at like 
50%, then Dealey can come in, finish it off, and then you're playing down a mon, and it's not very good. And that's what made Dealey so good, was that it had Earthquake and Arena Trap, so it could trap opponents really effectively, remove them from play, and you would get Pokemon advantage. If you're playing 6 versus 5, that's going to be significantly easier than playing 6 versus 6, because your opponent has less options for them to go into. As a result, Diglett, despite the fact that it has the lowest BST, was the best of Mudbraid, Drillbur, and Diglett. It was pretty great. Alright, so but that's only one example. It's like, okay, well, what happens if I want to use something else? Like, this is all ground types. So what happens if I want to use... Well, the, in, in this generation, we had uh, Ponyta Fire versus Ponyta Psychic. Well, wouldn't both of these mods be the exact same amount of good because they have the exact same base stat total? That's not true, and the reason for that is they have different movesets that they like to run. So, Ponyta Fire, its offensive set, you could run Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Flame Charge, High Horsepower. And what this allowed you to do is that with Flare Blitz, you had a very threatening stab move that could be fired off at practically any time. You had Wild Charge to hit Water Types, so Water resists Fire, so the Flare Blitz wouldn't do anywhere near as much damage. But if you use Wild Charge instead, you would do significantly more. You have Flame Charge, as we mentioned with Diglett beforehand, it's it can trap po uh, opposing Pokemon, and that's not very good for you. So, in order to subvert that, it would use Flame Charge, that would allow it to get a speed boost, that means that you're faster than the opposing Diglett, which means that your di the opposing Diglett cannot trap you, which means that you're safe. And then you also had a high horsepower, and that was for poison types like Marionette. There was also stuff like coughing running around, so you could hit them pretty hard, and then you also wouldn't have to worry about recoil. It was a good idea. So then, what about Ponyta Galar? I mean, surely if Ponyta is already that good, then what makes Ponyta Galar that good? Well, the main thing that Ponyta Galar had going on was a calm mindset. And it was alright, but the main issue with that is that it's not as immediately threatening. Ponyta Kanto can just fire off a flare blitz and still do a lot of damage, whereas Ponyta Galar, it has to use calm mind first in order to be truly be threatening. Uh, both Ponytas have the exact same base stat total, 50 HP, 85 attack, 55 defense, 65 special attack, 65 special defense, and 90 speed. 90 speed's really good. It allows you to outspeed a lot of the stuff, including the Drillbur and Mudbray from earlier. So why aren't these both as good? Well, first, Ponyta Galar is using its special attack as opposed to its regular attack, which means it's not going to be hitting as hard on baseline. And as this, the Calm Mind thing I said before, that means that you have to use a turn in order to use the Calm Mind in order to become more threatening. And then finally, Ponyta... Fire could use Flame Charge in order to deal with its Diglett weakness. Uh, Diglett gets 20 base speed, uh, 20 functional speed. I I'm going to have to figure out how to differentiate those. But it has a 20 speed stat during battles. Ponyta Galar gets up to 19, which means that it's slower than it, which means it's going to get trapped. And as Ponyta Fire can subvert this weakness by using Flame Charge and getting faster than it, Ponyta Galar is just a sitting duck and still has to deal with that. It has no way of boosting up its defense to become more tanky or anything like that, so it just has to sit there and take the hit, and it does not want to do that. As a result, Pony to Kanto, Pony to Fire, it was significantly more valuable as a result because it was more immediately threatening and could subvert that really dangerous option in Diglett. Alright, so uh, final thing is what happens if you just have something with less base stat total that has a much better move pool? So, Whalmer, it's got these really great stats, HP 130, Attack 70, Special Attack 70, it's got very bad defense in 35, and Special Defense is 35, and it's got a good speed tier in 60, which allows it to get 16, and then you can use a Choice Scarf to get up to 24, which will outspeed both the Ponyta and the Dealer from before, so that's good, isn't it? Well, its main issue is that the competition's way too fierce. It doesn't have a really good abil ability, like with Ponies, uh, with Diglett, or with... Drillbur, so we can't really benefit from that. And then we have something like Staryu. It's like, oh, well, what does Staryu do? Well, despite the fact that it's got a worse base stat total, it has a lower HP stat of 30, it's got better defenses in 55 in both defense and special defense, meaning that's bulkier, can take better hits, take hits better. It's got a better speed stat in 85, which allows it to get up to 19 speed, which can tie with Ponyta without a scarf as well as having the same special attack, so you're not losing any benefit by using Staryu instead of Whalmer. And you have better moves in your move pool. Your move pool is what really helps determine how good you are. So Staryu can run Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam Recover. Bolt Beam coverage is pretty fantastic. 
It allows you to hit Whelmer super effectively, as well as other water types. It hits flying types, all this other stuff, and it's a really good option to use. Whelmer only has Water Spout and Blizzard. Like, it also gets like uh, Ice Beam if you want to have something more accurate. But the issue there is that, well, what happens if you run into an opposing water type? You can't get a lot of progress. Uh, Staryu has Recover, which means that even if you take damage, you can recover it off and get 50% of your HP back. If you wanted to, you can also run a defensive set on this because it gets rapid spin, which can clear away hazards, which Whalmer does not have access to. So that was another point in, not in Whalmer's favor. But then also, if you're wanting to run a Choice Scarfer, why not instead run Frillish? And what Frillish has is that it has Water Spout, same as Whalmer. It's got Hydro Pump, but it's also got Shadow Ball, which is an additional stab option, which allows it to hit things even if you, you don't want to rely on Water Spout or Hydro Pump. And the reason why you wouldn't want to do that is that Water Spout is dependent upon HP, so if Frillish gets kind of worn down, then it can't come in as much and deal as much damage with Water Spout. Hydro Pump has 80% accuracy, which is unreliable. You would prefer not to do that. But Shadow Ball is 100% accurate and has a special defense lowering chance, so that's good. Excuse me. And then you also have Ice Beam, which allows you to hit stuff that you normally wouldn't. And Wilmer also has this, but on Frillish it's pretty reliable. And then you have, like, you have a worse base stat total, you have a lower speed stat, but you have much better special defense, defense, and HP, uh, your HP is not as good, but you have good bulk in defense and special defense, and your special attack's still pretty alright. But then you can also use Frillish as a special tank instead, because of how good its special defense is. And also gets a good support move pool of Will-O-Wisp, Hex, Scald, and Recover. So that all meant that you could spread burns over the course of a game, recover off the damage, and then be able to hit kind of hard because you have Hex, and it made it really good as a, as a special wall. And despite the fact that its base stat total isn't anywhere near as good as Whalmer's, its move pull was deeper that allowed it to pull off A, multiple sets, and B, do them pretty well, and have benefits that even Whalmer didn't have in its just regular Scarf set. As a result, despite the fact that both of these mons having lower base stat total than Whalmer, which has 400, they were still considered significantly better. If we go to the viability rankings, we have Frillish in A-, minus, we have Ponyta in A, and then we have Staryu in A-, minus, and then we have Ponyta Galar down in C, and then Wilmer's not even on there. As a result, base stat total can be very misleading when it comes to what exactly am I looking for in this Pokemon. Fundamentally, when you're trying to look at a Pokemon and you want to add this to your team, you have to ask, what does this do, and is there anything else that would do it better? Both Ponyta and Ponyta Galar want to be breakers. They want to do a lot of damage and be able to break through the entirety of the opponent's team. Ponyta Fire was just much better at it because it was more immediately threatening. And as a result, Ponyta Galar wasn't good, despite the fact that they have the same base stat total. Whenever you're team building, whenever you're trying to think, what can I do with this mod, make sure you think of its role first and foremost. You gotta factor in everything, the ability, all of the move sets, in addition to its base stat total. So I hope that if you've learned anything today, it's just that you have to be more aware when team building and thinking through what strategies you're doing. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.